Hello my friends and welcome back. It's Tuesday, that means you survived Monday. We're gonna survive the hell out of the other days of this week. Mark my words. But you know what didn't survive yesterday? A ship in the Russian Baltic Sea Fleet. You heard correctly, not Black Sea Fleet, Baltic Sea Fleet. And actually Ukrainian intelligence published a photo from inside the ship where we could see a spark turn into a flame and then... We know what happened, the communications center of the ship burned down. Now this is one of the newest additions to the Russian Baltic Sea Fleet because it was added to it in 2015. So it's in every standard a very modern new Russian ship and now it is uh, <laughs> burnt. It, the re restorement of this ship will take a long time. Check out this video, my friends. This is the layout of the ship, of course. And this is the video that the Ukrainian GUR published. I mean, it's it's in Baltysk, a city on the Baltic Sea, very close to Finland and Estonia, very, very far away from Ukraine. And Ukrainian intelligence published this video. Boom! You see a spark happening. I don't know if this is a battery or whatever is this device right here, but a spark happened into a big flame kaboom very good beautiful and this is all this very modern communication stuff in this new russian ship it's now burnt it is demilitarized it is sleeping with the fishes let's call it like that due to the fire inside the missile ship its communication and automation equipment were completely destroyed restoring its combat abilities will require a long time beautiful and now, my friends, I want to give you a little bit of a giggle before we go on with our due stay, because I know you need it, and I need it. It's dark times. We need some funny funs. Look at this, Karasimo and Shoigo watching their newest Baltic Sea ship burn to ashes. Oh, no. Sad moment. Of course, we got a burning house girl. I mean, this girl here gotta be Budanov. There's Budanov face missing here. Putin and Zelensky are playing, uh, how do you call it? Bombing the ships? How is this in English? Everybody knows this game. And Zelensky, <laughs> Zelensky got all of the ships. And here we have laser eye, burning eye, Budanov burning down this ship. You know, they poisoned Budanov's wife. I mean, payback is a slow bitch. This is what Budanov is doing. Ship burning here, ship burning there. Oil refinery is burning all across the place. The entire country burning. Slow payback. Check this out, my friends. You have contributed 77% or 92,000 within two days of this fundraiser. Combine our birthday party. Let's give Ukrainian units some NATO standard doctrine drones. These drones are made in Estonia. Of course, we will also give ray trucks, as you can see on these photos. We'll give five of them and also five drones. With this, we are fighting against the DGI supremacy in Ukraine because we all know China is sharing DGI intel with Russia. So we want to fight against that, bring Ukraine fully into NATO, giving them NATO. NATO drones made in Estonia. Go and contribute, my friends. Link is in the description below. Hello, my friends. And for the first time, I'm not making a fundraiser video for you from Ukraine, but from Estonia, my home country. I am in front of Kreitworks, an Estonian drone company, and they have produced something extremely beautiful for us. What is this? This is not a DJI drone, it is not a Chinese made drone, it is an Estonian made drone with Estonian technology. It's a thermal drone with a range of 20 kilometers. It's a recon drone. It's everything that right now is done in Ukraine by Chinese drones. And that is bad because Russia and China, they do exchange intelligence. This is our weapon against that alliance. This is the West versus the new Axis, which is Russia and China. And my friends, I will call upon you to donate on this new campaign, which is called the Combined Arms Birthday Party, because my birthday party is coming up on 24th of April. Buy five of these new drones. We will send them to Ukrainian elite forces, elite drone operators. They will test them out. And this will be the main alternative to the DJI, a non-Chinese, an Estonian product, safe NATO product for Ukrainian troops to use their recon abilities on. This drone will guide FPV drones to Russian positions and Russian tanks, and it will save lives directly. Donation link is in the description below. Through donating, you will help to liberate Ukrainian territory one destroy Russian tank at a time. Let's do it, my friends, like you have done it many times before. Slava Ukraini!
My friends, talking about accidents, L lately all of my videos are about accidents in Russia because they happen so much. Russia is a vast country with vast infrastructure, mostly built in the Soviet times half a century ago, not maintained for 50 plus years. I mean, you don't need to be an oracle or a genius to know what happens. It breaks. That's how robustly easy it is. And today I bring to you a bridge collapse in Russia, Smolensk region. Let's watch the video. Look at this, my friend. This used to be a bridge. And if you fix, if you repair, if you maintain, these things don't collapse. Bridges are pretty robust. You gotta just maintain them regularly and they will keep being bridges for a long periods of time. But Russia doesn't maintain anything anywhere ever, so even bridges can collapse. Yeah. It's a huge issue now because this is the main connection link between Russia and Belarus, the biggest and main logistics connection link. So it is, of course you can bypass it. There are many roads, but this is an issue, a big issue. Look at this, my friends, more juicy videos about the collapse of this bridge and Russians are like, oh, Ivan, how did this happen? What happened? Oh, I don't know. It suddenly collapsed. Ukrainians did it? No. Mr. Russian person, if you're watching, this was the lack of maintenance in the last 20 years that Putin has been in power. My friends, and now we'll jump to another location in Russia because I know you guys love it. We jump to Orsk, a city and a refinery that were flooded because a dam broke. Now, this dam was just built horribly. It was fully, like the company who built it fully corrupt, stole most of the money and just built them with the cheapest materials ever possible because they don't have a things called European building standards. These standards ensure that you build things properly and they last. In Russia, they don't have that. And now we have the guy who is the owner of the company who built the dam, thanks to who now hundreds of thousands of people are underwater, flooded, their houses are flooded. Let's see what he has to say about this whole shenanigans. And get your popcorn. Sergei Vasilievich, and if the crest of the dam withstood and the water began to wash the dam away from below, by the way, it began to wash it up in advance, then what is the problem? What was it badly compacted? So basically they're asking the owner of the company who built the dam, thanks to who people are very suffering right now, it's like, what's up? Sergei, what, what, what's going on, Sergei? Tell me. Now, the owner of the company in Russia, this is bardak, what we call. This is prosta. You build something prosta mean, in Russia means simple. It means you just build it with duct tape in Russia. And he says, that's a mystery to me too. I assume two factors. The human factor, someone drilled with a horizontal direction drilling machine and laid some pipelines for sewage discard, let's say, into the Ural. But having looked at the footage in what places the bridge occurred, this factor was out. So <laughs> he just said, oh, there could be a human factor, but looking at the footage, it's not the human factor. So what is the factor? Only one remained. Rodents, <laughs> which could have chewed through this dam. <laughs> A two to three centimeter hole would be enough for the water to go through the dam. Oh my god, Sergei Vasilievich, please pardon me. That is, we are building a dam for a billion rubles. Oh my god. <laughs> Only for it to be chewed through by rodents? How is this even possible? Oh, Russia, it's a beautiful country. I mean, what, what? If they finally fix up that country, I, ca I cannot laugh that much anymore. Yeah, they, they put like a billion rubles of stolen money from Russian people by Putin, you know. They give it to this company whose owner is probably like a friend of Putin's friend or something. And he takes most of the money, puts it in his pocket, buys a Bentley or something, 10 Bentleys and a castle, and then builds the dam with just dirt. It wasn't a dam, as you could see from the video. This is, look at the Netherlands. They know how to do stuff with water. They build dams. This was just dirt piled up. And rodents chewed through it. And like mice made holes in that dam. Ooh, who would have known? Ooh, I, I don't know. I would have known. Would you have known? <laughs> just being sarcastic to oblivion here because it's just Russian bardak. Keep it coming, Russia. It's funny. My friends, I'm not kidding you. This shenanigans even continues. Now, hundreds of thousands of people whose homes were flooded, they lost everything they have thanks to this corruption they have in Russia and the stealing of their own money by the government, by Putin, who has commenced a system like that. These people in Orsk, people who are suffering, who lost everything, their children have to be in wet and cold now. They come to the street, they want to change something. Oh, we are not cheap. We will do something in Russia. What will we do? Well, my friends, let's watch the video. What will they do? 
Putin helpas. Helpas. Putin helpas. Ma! 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 This is a flock of sheep, my friends. These are not people, they're sheep. And Putin is the leading sheep. Have you seen that video where there's no fence, but there are two posts and the leading sheep goes through it and you could go through everywhere, but everybody follows because they're sheep. They don't think if they suffer because of it or they move slower through that small thingy, they still go through there because they're sheep. Nah. This is what we see on this video. These people's homes were just destroyed because of Putin and his last 20 years stealing the money and infrastructure from the Russian people. And they are making the sheep sound that, nah, I don't know if it's in English, she sheep sounds. <laughs> For the Putin come and help them. <laughs> oh my God. This is a comedy. It's a comedy. But now my friends will go to Ukraine with a completely different understanding of people. Civil society is something that does not exist in Russia. It is something that is raising its head in Ukraine in the last 10 years, ever since this revolution of dignity of 2014, we have gotten civil society, which side effects, by the way, are people's ability to think for themselves. So here we have a Ukrainian farmer who has to make do and feed his village and his people, just make, feed his wife and children even, but his fields are filled with Russian mines. So what does he do? He can go and be like, Zelensky, help me, please. Or he can change his circumstances like a real man, like a real boss. That's what he does. Let's see. Despite the war, sowing season continues in Ukraine. First, a demining tractor checks the field for mines. There is no driver. The tractor is controlled remotely. We created a special machine, a, a mechanism with change. And here in this sentence, I will pause and I will enjoy this minute, my friends, talking about this. This is the main difference between Russians and Ukrainians. And I'm not even comparing with the West because there's no comparison. But Ukrainians see a very horrible situation that they are not to blame for. Because it, it's the Russian army came and mined their fields. Now they cannot eat because they cannot sow crops because they cannot sell it and they cannot have money. It's all bad. So, two options. Either I blame the Russians and I wait for my government to save me. Or I do something because I'm a man and I can control my own life and the circumstances around me and myself. And I can motivate myself to do something and jump over this hurdle. This is what I respect about people different people. And in Ukrainians, I see this all the time. I go to Kiev, I love that country to hell because I see how people react to the worst and horrible circumstances around them. They're like, this is bad, but we will make the most out of it. I have so much respect for this farmer here. His fields are mined. It's dangerous. He has to work three times as hard as before to even get something and he's doing it. He's taking matters into his own hands. He's not dependent on some other outside power, Putin or Zelensky, whoever supposed, NATO is supposed to come and help. He is doing his lot what he can. I respect it and I will help that nation as much as I can with my fundraisers. The chains hit the ground and if there is something there, it will detonate. Its main task is to save lives of people, our employees. Cases of farmers being hit by mines in Ukraine are not rare. Look at this. Look at this. They made this. They used their head, not being a flock of sheep saying Putin help us, but they used their head to create this machine to clear the fields, to sew the crops, to sell the crops, to make money, to feed their families. Oh, it's a beginning of something beautiful. The ability to think for yourself, to take matters into your own hands. The start of democracy. We try to create such a machine at minimal cost. Yes, I love that. <laughs> Sorry, it's such a praise for Ukrainians. I love this sentence so much because everything, everything in every system, every business is to create something in a scalable way, mass producible way, and the cheapest way possible so it does the job. Not the prosta Russian way, because if it breaks, it's pointless. So you can make it too cheap but the cheapest way possible that it works there's a difference we realize that this may be its last route depending on what we run into after russia retreat farmers find almost all kinds of mine and bombs in their fields so respect slava ukraini these ukrainian farmers deserve every good thing coming their way they are the beginning of a self-thriving self-governing nation love it so much 
My friends, now we jump into a completely different topic because we jump into a Russian trench and a Russian strong point underground, fortified, of course. It's, it's somewhere where the men sleep on the front. What's going on here? My lad, you're dancing. Why are you so happy? Turn around so I can see you. Oh, you turned around. So this is a foreign mercenary fighting for the Russians and he's very happy. He's dancing. Now, it's so bizarre and it says everything. This one video, which seems like it's saying nothing, it's pointless, says everything. Because they have these foreign mercenaries, this says that Russia needs manpower, otherwise they could get it from Russia. If Russia has so much manpower in Russia, why are they hiring foreign mercenaries? That means something. Second of all, listen to the song. Russian culture who is supposed to be according to Putin according to Russian people who are supporting you know pro-war people pro-Putin people it's the best culture we don't want the West we don't need the West we have our own great culture 1000 years Russia you know, everything that the Third Reich what was doing and what is the song they're listening on the front while fighting the West what is love it's, it's, it's one of the centers of the Western culture if, if you think about Western music this could definitely be one of the pillars of that music it's it's a very, everybody knows that song so this this video says so much more. They might say one thing, but if you look at the footage and real life of the Russians, every Russian radio almost plays Western music, every bigger one. So, <laughs> secretly inside, they're so butthurt, they want to be like the West. They have always copied the West. Peter the Great was the Russian Tsar, a very great Tsar who westernized Russia. He did everything, every law he did, everything was to copy France and England and Germany. That's what he did. And it has been going on like that for centuries. They want to copy the West, but they can't because they're not able to govern themselves. Copying the West meaning your people must be educated and able to govern themselves and not be sheep. But in Russia, that's not possible, unfortunately. My friends, look at this Russian tank and uh, it's, it's it's priceless. Look at it. it. They built a whole house on top of it to defend it against drones. Look at this. And I wouldn't show this if we wouldn't have something funny. This, honestly, it looks like it's ready for spice harvesting. When you Spice quotas. This is a Dune uh, quote. When your spice quotas are so high by the emperor, you have to build these tanks to fight the sandworms. And fighting sandworms, they did. I'll show you. We have actual footage, two minutes of drone footage, which I kind of show you. The links in the description below of this tank roaming around on the fields, followed by other tanks. It was an armored assault, and it was the leading tank. They tried to break through Ukrainian positions. You know what happened? They really are onto something here because they were all destroyed. Yeah, nothing new about it. Didn't help them at all. <laughs> My friends, and now for the second time in this week, I will butcher some Buy Me A Coffee monthly members to oblivion, to orbit. If it's your name, then you should feel yourself being lifted up, because the butchering power is strong with this one. Philip Donald, Gengard Hedini Ghost, Reza Pahlavi Kroven Brinke of Iran. We have Kroven Brinke of Iran. Weird. James Williams, Deb from the US, Hangar Party Aviation, Bradley David Walsh, Claudette Feiler. Thank you to all of these monthly members of Buy Me A Coffee. If you like my videos, then go and contribute to the fundraiser and become a member of Buy Me A Coffee page. Until my next video, my friends, which is tomorrow. So subscribe and be back. Slavo Ukraine.